Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cyclic AMP signaling. Uh, so this video is going to be a continuation of the video on fluorescence resonance energy transfer, or FRET. Uh, and basically in this video what we're going to talk about is an extension of this. So in the previous video what we saw is that FRET is a technique uh, for deciding whether two proteins are close to each other, close enough to be interacting with one another. And the way that you do it is, if we take it as examples, the Aura I1 protein and the adenylyl cyclase 8 protein, then uh, we can tag Aura I1 with a fluorescence protein, and in this case we tagged it with cyan fluorescence protein, and we can tag adenylyl cyclase 8 with a fluorescence protein, and in this case we tagged it with the yellow fluorescence protein. Now, these two different fluorescence proteins uh, uh, absorb UV light of different frequencies. So, we can choose which one we want to, which, which fluorescence protein's uh, UV frequency we want to use. So, we used the uh, UV frequency for, that stimulated cyan fluorescence protein. And basically, when we shine that frequency of UV light onto our, our experiment, uh, then cyan fluorescence protein is going to absorb that UV light and yellow fluorescence protein is not going to absorb that UV light. However, this is how we, um, how we analyze whether these two proteins are very close together because if they're very close together, what's going to happen when UV absorbs its, uh, its um, sorry, when cyan fluorescence protein absorbs its UV light is that it's going to gain some energy from that UV light. Now, if they're very close together, then cyan fluorescence protein is going to give some of that energy to uh, its surrounding molecules. And one of those, if one of those surrounding molecules is yellow fluorescence protein, then yellow fluorescence protein will get some of this energy. Now, the way yellow fluorescence protein gets rid of excess energy is that it emits yellow light. So, if the two proteins are close together, then when we fire UV light uh, that's of the right frequency to stimulate cyan fluorescence protein, we should not only just see blue light coming back, but we should also see yellow light coming back. So we should see blue light coming back from the cyan fluorescence protein, and we should see yellow light coming back from the yellow fluorescence protein. Now what we're going to do is a confirmation of this result. To confirm it even more, you can use acceptor photo bleaching fret. Photo bleaching fret. Uh, so, accept a photo bleaching fluorescence resonance energy transfer in full. Okay, so this second type of fret, what you do is you first do the normal type of fret, and then what you do is you shine in a really high uh, intensity um, UV light of the frequency for yellow fluorescence protein. So, we use the UV for yellow, fl the, the right frequency of UV that is absorbed by yellow fluorescence protein, but we use really high intensity. And this is the photo bleaching part. And basically, it destroys yellow fluorescence protein's ability to fluoresce. So, you have now knocked yellow fluorescence protein out. Okay, now. Uh, cyan fluorescence protein won't be able to give energy to yellow fluorescence protein. Well, it will be able to give energy to yellow fluorescence protein, but yellow fluorescence protein won't be able to radiate it out as yellow light. So instead, what it will do is it will return the energy to cyan fluorescence protein, basically. So cyan fluorescence protein overall ends up with more energy than it would have done if yellow fluorescence protein had been, um, had been actively radiating energy away. We've destroyed uh, yellow fluorescence protein uh, and through photo bleaching it, and now cyan fluorescence protein has more energy. So basically, the, it's going to radiate higher intensity blue light back out. So what we should see is we should now see uh, uh, the blue light that's being radiated out as being more intense. Firstly, we should no longer see yellow light coming, but we, the blue light that we should see should also have a greater intensity, and that is this, what is known as acceptor photo bleaching fret, that second step that confirms uh, that it is an interaction between uh, the uh, cyan fluorescence protein and the yellow fluorescence protein, indicating that aura, aura I1 and adenylyl cyclase 8 in this case are very close together, close enough to be interacting. Okay, and the reason it's called acceptor photo bleaching 
is that you are photo bleaching the acceptor of energy. So yellow fluorescence protein ex usually accepts energy from this cyan fluorescence protein. So what you destroy, you photo bleach that energy acceptor basically, and that's why it's called acceptor photo bleaching FRET. Okay, and it seeks to confirm the results of normal FRET.